be looking at today are the two simple harmonic motion equations x is equal to a cosine omega t and x is equal to a sine omega t. Now we've been using those in A-level physics, additionally we know that if we have an oscillating object which starts at maximum amplitude then we're going to need to use the cosine equation. However, if we have an object which starts with a, uh, with a zero displacement, then we're going to be using the sine equation. Now, in this video, I'm going to take you beyond the specification. We're going to see where do those two equations actually come from. Okay, now let's have a look at the following situation. We have an object of mass m. So that's the, just this object over here, which is sitting on a horizontal surface and we've connected this to a spring of spring constant, let's just say K. Okay, now um, let's apply Newton's second law that uh, says that the resultant force, which is, let's say that F, that is equal to mass times acceleration. Now what forces are acting on this in the horizontal direction? We know that there's also gravity acting um, or the force due to gravity weight acting downwards and there's also normal reaction acting in the vertical direction. So uh, I'm just going to even make a little note over here. I'm going to say that this is all in the x direction. So uh, F is equal to MA, there's only one force really acting on this object in the horizontal direction, and this is the elastic force due to the, due to the spring. So in this case, uh, let's say that this force is equal to minus KX. So this is going to equal to mass times acceleration. If I was to just rearrange for the acceleration, I'm going to get that the acceleration is going to equal minus k over m times the displacement. Now, if we just compare that with the equation for simple harmonic motion, what, which we've learned so far, we know that the acceleration in simple harmonic motion is directly proportional to the displacement and the constant of proportionality is our angular frequency omega squared. So we know that in this case if we displace this mass on the right this is going to start um, to be moving in a simple harmonic motion where omega will actually be the square root of k over m because if we square that we're going to get k over m. Now um, let's apply Newton's second law that uh, says that the resultant force which is let's say that f that is equal to mass times acceleration. Now what forces are acting on this in the horizontal direction? We know that there's also gravity acting um, or the force due to gravity weight acting downwards and there's also normal reaction acting in the vertical direction. So uh, I'm just going to even make a little note over here. I'm going to say that this is all in the x direction. So uh, F is equal to MA, there's only one force really acting on this object in the horizontal direction and this is the elastic force due to the, due to the spring. So in this case, uh, let's say that this force is equal to minus KX. So this is going to equal to mass times acceleration. If I was to just rearrange for the acceleration, I'm going to get that the acceleration is going to equal minus k over m times the displacement. Now, if we just compare that 
with the equation for simple harmonic motion, what, which we've learned so far, we know that the acceleration of simple harmonic motion is directly proportional to the displacement and the constant of proportionality is our angular frequency omega squared. So we know that in this case, if we displace this mass on the right, this is going to start um, to be moving in a simple harmonic motion where omega will actually be the square root of k over m. Because if we square that, we're going to get k over m. Now, this is actually a differential equation that will need to be solved in order for us to reach the correct answer. We can kind of think about it in terms of derivatives. Now, we can remember that the acceleration is actually the second time derivative of, um, of the displacement. So uh, let's just write x double dot, where the um, dot here signifies the second time derivative is going to equal to minus k over m times x. Now what we're going to need to do is try and solve this differential equation. The multiple different techniques at solving differential equations the technique that we're going to use this time is to try and essentially guess the solution. Now we're going to need a function which satisfies the following condition. If we differentiate it twice with respect to time, it has to get a multiple of k over m in front of it, which is uh, actually a, um, a multiple of, uh, of our omega squared and um, it has to be the negative function of itself. Okay, well, we know that the trigonometric functions behave in a similar way, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to guess that a solution of this form here will exist. So let's have as a our sort of a guess for the function would be that x will be some constant a cosine omega t plus uh, let's say a something called a phase change which is just not a constant I'm going to call that theta plus b sine omega t plus another constant which is theta which is equal to just the phase change. Okay, now um, in this case, a and b are just constants. So uh, let's just label this equation. So a is a constant, b over here is also a constant. Now why have, why have I chosen omega to be uh, multiplying the time? Well, if uh, I differentiate it once due to the chain rule, I'm going to get a factor of omega in front of the equation. And uh, if I'm to differentiate this guy with respect to t twice, I'm going to get uh, a factor of omega twice uh, in front of the equation. Now, this factor, theta, is not actually time dependent, so that's also a constant it's known as the uh, essentially the phase so i can just write that down over here so this is equal to the phase in other words how far into the cycle i am into so when i differentiate that with respect to time uh, this will actually just disappear but i want to be as general as possible Okay, well, let's actually differentiate this with respect to time. Let's take the first derivative of this. So um, x dot will be equal to, I need to use the chain rule. So firstly, need to differentiate omega t with respect to t, which is going to give me a factor of omega. Then I'm going to get 
a and then the derivative of cos is negative sine so I'm gonna get a minus sign over here and then the sine of omega t like so plus b times the derivative of sine omega t plus the phase well that's just going to give me similarly omega times the derivative of sine is cos so uh, cos of omega t like so okay i'm almost there now what i'm going to do is differentiate yet again with respect to t so i'm going to take the second derivative of this function with respect to time so this is going to give me i'm going to get another factor of omega and the derivative of sine is just cos so i'm going to get minus omega squared a cos omega t plus now the derivative of cos is negative sine so this plus will actually now turn into a minus so this will be minus b and then i'm going to get another factor of omega squared like so and this will be sine of omega t okay now we can actually see let's just factorize out minus omega squared and x squared will be minus omega squared a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t now depending on the initial conditions of our problem we can play around with the values of those constants for example if we say that let's say that we have conditions in which i'm just going to use a different color over here on the side in which our phase is equal to zero degrees and let's say that our constant b is equal to zero then our solution is going to turn to x is equal to a cosine omega t if uh, on the other hand our phase is equal to zero and um, let's say that our constant a is equal to zero well if that's the case then our solution will be x is equal to um, b sine of omega t like so which are essentially the two equations that are used in a level okay folks so i just wanted to derive this equation for you guys so that you know where those two equations in simple harmonic motion are, um, are really derived from hope you have enjoyed this video and um, yeah if there are any questions please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing